the things of the world versus eternal life. The things of the world do not contain life. You own the things of the world, but the things of the world do not own you. God made you a ruler. He never made the things of the world a ruler. There is no life in the things of the world. God blew his life into you, its image and likeness into you, so that the image and the likeness could be the ruler of the world. Never allow anything of the world, either be knowledge, whether be riches or abundance of the things you possess, how far you are elevated. Positions are never your ruler. The position is vacant without you. So when the ruler gets into the position, he makes the position work because of the ruler. Eternal life versus the things of the world. The things of the world versus eternal life. <laughs> Firstly, the things of the world do not contain life. Let's get that fixed and straight. The things of the world do not contain life. Let's put the record right this morning. The things of the world versus eternal life. Eternal life versus the things of the world. Let's see the difference this morning. Luke chapter 12 verse 15. And he said to them, Take heed and be aware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he owns. Or possesses. One's life does not consist in the things that he owns or possesses. The things he owns. You own the things of the world, but the things of the world do not own you. Is that right? So do not allow the things of the world to own you and control you. God made you a ruler. He never made the things of the world a ruler. So never allow the things of the world to rule you. He made you a ruler to rule the things of the world. There is no life in the things of the world. God blew his life into you, its image and likeness into you, so that the image and the likeness could be the ruler of the world. He never gave the authority of the things of the world to rule a ruler. Is that record straight this morning? All over the world who are watching me live today, get that record straight. Never allow anything of the world to rule you. Either be knowledge or anything else, whether be riches or abundance of the things you possess. The position is not your ruler. You are the ruler of your position. So no matter how far you climb over the position, how far you are elevated, positions are never your ruler. You can have your position and they can stay empty forever. Without you, the position is empty. The position is vacant without you. So when the ruler gets into the position, he makes the position work because of the ruler. The position is not the ruler. The ruler is the ruler of the position. And you are the ruler. The position is not the ruler. The position enables you to rule.
So man's life is not in the things that he owns or consists of the things that he possesses. No matter how wealthy you are, how rich you are. No matter how far you climb in education. No matter how well educated you are. I'm not putting education off. I'm not putting possessions off. Bible talks about the blessings. He talks about the rest being headed. All these are things, the blessings. Spiritual blessings or physical blessings. But I'm talking about your possession and the things of the world. They contain no life. Eternal life is not found in them. You came into the world where things were. So when you leave the world, you leave the things and go home with the life you came. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so whether you are plenty or little, whether you are blessed in abundance of the things of the world, we have all have one thing in common. We came naked and we will go home naked. You will never take the things of the world with you. No, did you come into the world with the things of the world? You use them, leave them behind and go home the way you came. King Solomon was the richest man that ever lived and there's no billionaire and trillionaire on the earth will ever be rich like Solomon. Never, never. He married 1,000 wives. No millionaire on the planet has married 1,000 wives. He's the richest man that ever lived and will ever live in history. No matter how far you try to catch the world now, you will never be as rich as King Solomon. He broke the record in history. And nobody coming later on will ever break the record. He remains the sole break recorder of the riches a man can go to. And that man finally at the end of his journey said, it's all catching the wind. I came naked and I will go home naked. Yeah. John the Baptist ate locusts and honey. He was never dressed in three-piece suit. I love wearing suits. I have a nice necktie. I have nice shoes. But they don't own me. I own them. I don't find eternal life in this. I don't find eternal life in the shoe. Eternal life is not found in the things of the world. <laughs> Somebody say, Pastor, preach it. I preach it. John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17 says, Do not love the world or the things of the world. Do not love the world or the things of the world. This is a commandment. Do not love the world. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not gossip. Do not worry. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not murder. Do not, do not. Among the do nots, the Lord is saying to you, do not love the world or the things of the world. You can make money. You can have nice clothes. You can have nice shoes and nice houses and nice buildings, nice cars. Nobody's stopping you. But do not love it. Do not allow the things of the world to rule you and control you and possess you. God never made the things of the world to become rulers. He made you a ruler. He made you to possess them and rule them and control them. Never allow the things of the world to control you. 
Money should not control you. You should control money. Food should not control you. You should control food. Things of the world should not control you. God made you a ruler. He said, subdue it. Dominion means control it and put everything under your feet and you rule over them. He allowed nothing of the world to rise up and control you. Money has got no mouth. He has no hands. He has no eyes. He has no mind. He has no life. So why should money control you? You make all the money you can make, but allow money, no money to control you. You control money. The steer of the car is in your hands. You decide where the car should go. The car never decides where you should go. You decide where the car should go. Hello? Yes. Therefore, you are a controller of the car, controller of money, controller of name and fame. Name and fame should never control you. You should control name and fame. Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why? Because your life is filled with the things, love of the things of the world. So there is no space for you to love the Father. There is a place in the middle and the center of your life called the center of man, which is the spirit of man. And from there comes peace and joy and love. And that place belongs to God. It does not belong to the things of the world. Therefore, if that place is occupied by you loving the world, there is no place for God. God must not compete with another God inside the things of the world inside. God must have this rightful place in the heart. Things of the world must live outside because they are of the world outside. Inside here, God must live. So if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. So don't go to sleep with your car. Don't go to sleep with your money in the mind. Let your money stay in the bank and don't go to sleep with the bank in your mind in the bed. Don't carry your bank into the, into the bed. Don't carry your bank and your money into bed. Let money stay outside. Right? Let money stay outside. You go and sleep free. Let the Lord Jesus Christ fill your heart. Life is inside here. God blew life in here. He made the things outside. Tree grows outside. Purpose grow outside. Animals live outside. Money is outside in the bank. Don't bring them back into your heart and sleep with the bank in your heart. Uh uh. Life versus things. Some of you are so desperate to become world famous. So desperate to become known and to be heard and to be seen. And want you know, praise from people everywhere and sex. They want you know, people to lift you up. And want respect and end sex. Yeah, you can have all those. But remember, they must not live on the inside of you. The inside of you belongs to God alone. And Jesus alone was the life giver. Amen. 
Do not allow anyone, anybody, any relationship to take God's place. That's the reason why Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, love me more than your father, your mother, your auntie, your uncle, your in-law, your children. Love me more, more, more than any relationship on the planet. Everybody say, Jesus first. And everything second or last. No matter what, Jesus first. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Do not love the world or the things of the world. How would you allow allow the things of the world to control you? We make money, but money doesn't make us. If money makes us, then money controls you. We make money, so we control money. Money, money doesn't make us, so why should money control me? Cars don't make us. We control cars. We make cars. So why should a car control me? We make houses and build houses. Houses don't build us. So we control houses. Hello? We are the rulers. God made men a ruler. He never made men to be a slave of anything. God never sent his kingdom life on the planet to be a slave of anything. God made that kingdom man a ruler of the earth. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, that lust of the flesh, that lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. What the eyes love to get. You stay here and you throw the eyes. Even though you're not getting the car, your eyes are already getting it for you. You're not marrying somebody, but the eyes marrying that lady or man for you. You're not eating the food, but the eyes eating the food for you. The last of the heart. The lust of the flesh. The flesh that wants to be entertained. Feel good. The flesh that wants to receive its entertainment. Always wants to receive some form of entertainment. You know why you're looking for entertainment? Because you don't receive entertainment in the spirit. When you receive entertainment in the spirit, it will cancel your physical entertainment. Aha, uh -huh. I know what you're asking for. I'll give you more. Bible says, in Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, this is what the Bible says, right? Do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. The word delight means his joy, his entertainment is in the word of God. So when you receive entertainment 
in meditating on the word of God, in obeying the word of God, and welcoming the word of God, and allowing the word of God to control you and leave you, see what will happen to you. Bible says all things were made through the word of God, and all things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. So the word of God gave life to the fish, and the fish moves around, play in and out. The word of God gave life to the birds, and they fly in and out. The word of God gave life to the animals. The word of God gave life to the trees, the purpose, the plants. The word of God gave life to you. So when the word of God who gave life to mankind and life to the universe, life to planet earth, if that word of God lives in you, where will you go and look for entertainment? Hey, 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 hey. See the birds go up and down. Who made them fly? The word of God. The fish that see, see the sea and they jump up and down. They show their, you know, wings and whatever. And you know, you just imagine. They fly joyfully in the wind. Who made them fly? The trees that swing to and fro in the wind. And the fruits that bring colorful fruits for your body. All kinds of colors, purple, bananas, pineapples, name it, oranges, apples. Who made them and gave them the colors and the taste? The word of God. All things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. It is the word of God that gave life to everything. So if you delight yourself in the word of God, the word of God will delight you too. And entertain you and give you joy, give you life, give you everything. the word of God is ink and paper written down in computers today in your phone today hey, there is life in there life in the word of God Jesus said the word I speak to you are spirit and they are life and in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says the word of God is living is powerful, is sharper than any to a sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his side. All things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. The word of God is living. It's not my word like armor. Is it not like a fire that breaks the rock into pieces? As the rain comes down and the snow from heaven. And does not return there. But water the earth and make it bring forth and bath. So shall the word which I speak that goes out of my mouth. It shall never return to me void. But I shall succeed and prosper in the thing for which I send it. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him nothing was made that was made. What are you looking for in the entertainment industry? The heaven has already given you the entertainment. The industry from heaven was put into you so that you could find entertainment in your heart with the word of God. What are you looking for? Life singers up, up on the stage. It's time to celebrate. Life, this is the things of the world.
Life, this is the things of the world. <laughs> Let's celebrate this word for a while. Some of you don't own things. And some of you are not well educated as others. Some of you feel down at it because you're not well educated. You feel poor. You think that you don't own the world when others own the world. And you think that you miss out on something. You have not missed out on anything. <laughs> Hallelujah! We want to sing a song. We want to thank God for the word of God this morning. Right? And celebrate for a while and join us with a celebration and we'll get back to you shortly. Come on, fire up in the islands. Lighting fire. Lighting fire. Sing it, everyone. So we gave them an opportunity to express their heart. Uh, welcome back to live stream. Please be seated. Thank you for joining us with a praise. Right? We want to continue on this one this morning. For all that is in the world, 
the last of the flesh, the last of the highs, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world is passing away and the last of it. The world is passing away and the last of it. But he who does the will of God lives forever. The word lives forever. The another word for lives forever, excuse me, it's called eternal life. He who does the will of God lives forever. So another word for lives forever is called eternal life. The world is passing away and the last of it and the things of the world will pass away. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Wow. It is one thing to allow the word of God to entertain you. And that you are entertained by the word of God. It is another thing for the world to entertain you. Choose. Today. You want which one to entertain you? The world to entertain you or the word of God to entertain you? Stay with me. I got some more for you. Eternal life comes from God. God is the father of the eternal life. He is the eternal life himself. He is the source of the eternal life. The fountain, the wellspring, the origin, the founder, the fountainhead of the eternal life. All lives on earth, fish life, animal life, reptiles, birds, insects, plants, life in the universe and life on planet earth and under the sea and under the ground. All lives seen or not seen, they all come from one place and came from one place. God is the father of life and eternal life. Including human life. God is the giver and the author of life. Matthew 19, 6 says, One man, young man came up and said to Jesus, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And Jesus said, you know, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not tell lies. You know, do not this and that. All the do not he gave him. And the young man said, I have done all of this since I was young. Do I lack anything? Jesus looked straight at him and said, You go and sell all the things you have. You go and sell all the things you have. And after you sold them, after you sold them, give the money to the poor. Then come and follow me. If you want to be perfect. The Bible says the men, young men, when they were very sad, because he was a rich man. And Jesus looked around the crowd and said, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Why is Jesus saying that? Because the riches live in here. The riches do not live outside of men. They bring the riches to live in here. If you're a man bringing the riches in here, there is no place for God or for eternal life. 
Make all the money you want to make. Become the richest man on the planet. But let them stay outside. And bring Jesus into your life and receive life today. God made the world. He made everything. And later on he made the man. And told the man to control the world. And gave the world to him. He gave the world to the man, the kingdom man. That he brought into existence. He said, be the ruler of the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion. Control it. Rule the earth. But he never told the world to rule the man. He told the man to rule the world. So do not allow the riches of your life to control you. And live on the inside of you. Let the riches live on the outside of you. And let Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world... The king of Papua New Guinea and the king of the universe live on the inside of you. So set the record right. If there is anybody, anything taking the place of Jesus, get rid of them today and let them live on the outside of you. Let money stay in his place. Let other things of the world stay in their own place. Don't bring them inside of you. Don't live with them and go to sleep with them. Let them stay outside. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your food. Enjoy your house. Enjoy the environment. Enjoy your car. But let them all live on the outside of you and let nothing live on the inside. Life versus the things of the world. And the disciples asked Jesus, well, who can now make it to the kingdom of heaven if it is very hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God? And Jesus said, what is impossible for man is always possible with God. With God, all things are possible. You can be the richest man on the planet, but you can still have the Lord Jesus Christ. All things are possible. You can be a multi-billionaire, millionaire, trillionaire, quadrillionaire. You can own the whole world. And the Lord Jesus says, ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You can possess the whole planet. You can possess the nations of the world and still love Jesus because they don't live on the inside of you. You control them with Jesus from the, from the inside outside. You can own the whole world with Jesus in your heart. And have life in you. And that's why the Lord says, ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You can possess the whole world. The ends of the earth can become yours. Nations can become your inheritance. Yeah. And the Lord said, ask of me. He can do that for you. He did it for Solomon. He can do it for you. There's nothing wrong about owning things. There's nothing wrong about being rich. Abraham was rich. Solomon was rich, David was rich, many people in the Bible, and even today they are rich. But the things of the world do not need to live on the inside of you. Get them out of you and allow Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, to be the Lord of the inside of you. Let nothing of the world to control you, you can control the world. For you are a ruler. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ooh. John 10, 27 to 28. This is beautiful. Listen to it. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life. The sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me 
and I give them eternal life. Money doesn't give you eternal life. Men doesn't give you eternal life. Women doesn't give you eternal life. Things of the world will never give you eternal life. Jesus Christ, the king of the universe, savior of the world, gives you eternal life. No matter how rich you are, how educated you are, how famous you are, they will never give you eternal life. If you become world famous, if you become so rich and you have known Jesus, no life. Why? Eternal life means there is life after death. You may not believe what I'm saying to you. And you have the right to do it because God gave you this little tiny right. But I want to challenge your right for a while. I know I'm speaking to a modern, civilized, sophisticated world today from Papua New Guinea. By human standards, you can, you can defeat me. But by the kingdom standard, you will never defeat me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And let me speak to you. Right. Life is only found in Christ Jesus. The things of the world do not contain life. See if money can jump out there and give you life. No. They are there to support life, not give life. They are there to support life. Without life, there will be no money on the planet. Without life, there will be no cars. Life was already here before we begin to build buildings in cities and towns. Life was already here. So houses look after life. Trees look after life. Food look after life. Cars look after life. But they don't give life. Yes. Yes. At the end of the journey, listen to me carefully. You and I will leave everything and go. You read the book of Ecclesiastes and see what the richest man on the planet said about all these things. He came to his conclusion with the smartness of life that God has given him, with wisdom and understanding. And he concluded, naked I have come and naked I will return. <laughs> hmm. Kingdom. Kingdom. Jesus must come first. There is life after death. If you don't believe me, the moment your spirit and your body separate, to your surprise, to your surprise, smart man, you will find out that there is life. And the King Jesus is the boss of that eternal life. It's only a matter of years. Hey, be born, be a child, be a children, be a teenager, be an adult, huh? then be a pops, the good father. <laughs> then a good grandparent and ready to kick the bucket and the bucket must ready to kick you. Whichever comes first. As soon as the body goes to the ground, and the spirit comes out of the body. To your surprise, you will find some angels coming to pick you up. And your right will be taken away from you immediately. Remember that your right was not needed to bring you to the planet. You never used your right to give you the color skin, your nationality, your sex, which parents you are born into, how you look. A tall, 
how you look, where you come from, where you are, nationality. Your right was never used. It was theocratically given to you. Not by choice, but by a decision from the kingdom. So God will use the same right when you leave the earth. And separation takes place. The body goes back to where it comes from and the spirit goes back to where it comes from. Yeah. Automatically, the angels will take you and you will have no right, but you will be the ends at the mercy of the angels. And don't think that they will make a mistake because they've seen what you have done on the planet and they will surely put you in your right place. <laughs> Hallelujah! They will never make a mistake because they have seen what you have done under the sun. No mistake. Every little thing you do is recorded down. So they will put you in the right place. No mistake, no arguments, no rights. Everything is stripped away from you the moment you leave the earth and you are in the mercy of the angels. So while you have the time, receive life. Receive Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man goes to the Father except through me. You cannot say to Jesus, I'm a rich man, I'm a famous man. I'm the powerful man. I'm Adolf Hitler, the one who caused the Second World War. Come on, give way. Sorry. You are Adolf Hitler when you live on the planet. When you leave, you go home naked. You are in the hands of the angels. And they will put you, Adolf Hitler, in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. Angels will never make a mistake. They will exactly know where to put you. The spirit world is as real as the physical world. It's as real as you watching me and I'm seeing you. It is just as real as that. There is no imagination. There is no myth. There is no fantasy. The spirit world is not a dream world. It's a real world like the physical world is so real to you. Demons live in the spirit world. Angels live in the spirit world. God lives in the spirit world. You know, God, Father lives in there. Jesus lives in there. There's a spirit world of its own that exists. And all of a sudden, when your body departs from your spirit and separation takes place, which you call it death, but I call it separation, you'll just be surprised to find out that there are angels and you will say, yes, I believe it. I thought you didn't exist. That's why I didn't believe you. Skeptics, listen to me. You will believe it on that day. You have the right not to listen to me. You have the right. Use your right and say, no, I don't, I don't want to listen to him. Well, use your right. You are given the right. But you only have the right for 80 years and 90 years, and the right will be taken away from you. You didn't come onto the planet yet by your right. And so you go home without your rights. You only have that right for eight years, nine years, hundred years. By some chance, you live hundred over hundred years. That's only little time compared to eternity. It is a speck on the horizon, so just tiny bit compared to eternity. If you want to receive eternal life and live with Jesus forever, today is your opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, and bring Him into your heart. And with Jesus, rule the world from the inside out, not from the outside inside. <laughs> my sheep here, my boys, I know them by name, and I give them eternal life. John 17, verse 3, and this is eternal life. Listen to the definition, the biblical definition of eternal life. John 17 verse 3, Jesus Christ himself is defining eternal life. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, 
that one through God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent to the world. And that's eternal life. If you know that one through God and Jesus Christ is son whom he has sent to the world to be the savior, to give life, you have eternal life. If you have Jesus in your life and you know God the Father, you have eternal life. Congratulations. But if you don't know the Father and you don't have Jesus in your heart, this is the day to receive it. Stand on your feet. I invite you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord and receive life and ask the Lord to forgive you of any sins you committed and receive eternal life. Those in the congregation with me now and those that are watching live stream all over the world, if you have no life in you, the things of the world will not give you life. Life is only found in Jesus Christ. And you will receive life only through Jesus and nothing else and nowhere else. Nobody else will give you life. Nothing else will give you life. Life is only found in Jesus Christ alone. Eternal life is only found in him. If you have never received him, I invite you to receive him. And I pray this simple prayer with him to receive Jesus Christ as your save, personal Savior and Lord. In Revelation 3.20, the Lord says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into his house, eat with him, and he shall eat with me. So through the word of God today, Jesus is now knocking at your door. Open your heart and receive him right now. Pray this prayer with me to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord and as the King of your life. Lord Jesus, I give you my life today. I receive you as my personal Savior and Lord. You are the Son of the living God who came down on the planet to save me from sin. Today, I ask you to forgive my sins and cleanse me and purify me and come on the inside of me and give me life. You are the way to the Father. You are the life. You are Jesus Christ. I receive you as my personal Savior. I give you my life today in Jesus' name. Thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you for coming into my heart. Today I have eternal life because I have you in my heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father, thank you for this great morning today. And those that are receiving you all over the world today through this live stream. Lord, I pray that you will give them eternal life as you promised. And let them have a great day today in Jesus' name. And let a new transformation come into their lives in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. If you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, I want to congratulate you and welcome you to life and welcome you to the kingdom life. I want to show you a little bit of things that are taking place right now as you receive Jesus. One, your sins are forgiven. Two, you have received eternal life through Jesus Christ. Three, Bible says, he came into his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received them, he gave them the right to become the children of God. So today, Christ has given you the right to become the child of the living God. Congratulations. <laughs> Number four, your spirit is now born again. Jesus said <laughs> to Nicodemus, if you're not born again, you shall not see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, how can an adult, grown-up man be born again the second time? And Jesus said, well, men, is, men must be born of water and spirit. If you want to enter the kingdom of God, you must be born of spirit and of water. So if you are born again today, congratulations, you can now see the kingdom of God. And number five, your name is written in the book of life. And because your name is written in the book of life, you have now become a citizen of heaven. So you can live the heaven life on earth because you are a citizen of heaven. You are physically a citizen of your nation, but spiritually, you are a kingdom man. Your name is written in two books. The physical man's name is written in your country. Your name is written in your country, but a spiritual man's name is written in the book of life in heaven. One more. He has taken you out from the kingdom of darkness 
into the kingdom of the light of his son. Congratulations. You have become a new person. The old is gone, the new has come. Wow. You have eternal life with you now, right now. And the Bible says, angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that repents. Today, multitude of angels are celebrating your salvation all over the world and millions of angels are now celebrating your salvation because for this reason Christ came that you may be saved and this is what the Lord Jesus said I have come that you might have life and life to his fullness I have come to seek and save that which was lost if you are saved today and if you are lost and you are saved today congratulations right grow in the word of God Know the word of God, become a friend of God, obey the word of God, live in the word of God, love the word of God, love the kingdom ways, love Jesus, pray all the time and have fellowship with the spirit and live a spirit-filled life. If you do that, you will live the kingdom life on earth and you don't need to go for any form of entertainment because heaven will entertain you in your heart. In Jesus' name, we'll see you at the same time next Sunday. Have a pleasant week. Bye-bye for now. Say again to your neighbor and say, I am so blessed. Tell your friend and say, I know where to put the things of the world and I know where to put my Lord Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, you don't need to sit down. Hey, who told you to sit down? Come on, this is time for celebration. You know why it's time for celebration? People are fighting for position. People are fighting for cars and money. People are fighting for name and fame. People are fighting for money. And they go to sleep wishing for money, wishing cargo, wishing name and fame. And politics is on. And they're racing for some seats. They're outside of life here. Yeah. Things of the world here. Yeah. Nobody might recognize you. But if Jesus lives in you, you're recognized by heaven. Ah! Tell your friend and say, I don't care if the world doesn't recognize me. As long as I am recognized by the kingdom. Come on, live singers up on the stage. We are going to have a great night tonight. Remember, the best women of the hour conference is still on. Yeah. I'm not yet finished yet. The best women of the hour. You know, Esther was the best women of the hour at that generation and saved a nation from annihilation. And God has purposely put her on the throne to save a nation, kingdom nation. God's kingdom seed was saved through Esther. So there are some Esthers I'm talking to you right now. 